Welcome to Future Docs Podcast. My name is Pedram Nazani. I'm the uh, Chief Clinical Officer here at AC Medical and your co-host of AC Medical's uh, Future Docs Podcast. And I'm your co-host, Valen Rosas, a leadership intern here at AC Medical. And as always, we invite you to watch the video version of this podcast by visiting youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. Today's episode is episode 44 entitled Post-Interview Do's and Don'ts. So it's interview season right now. And we're waiting for residency programs to contact those who have had interviews. It's a very nerve wracking moment for many of us. And most of us probably don't know what to do. So let's hear what Dr. Mazzani has to say about how you should follow up with residency programs. Should you contact them? How many days after email, text? What is the appropriate way to do that without being <laughs> A little bit too pushy or annoying or aggressive. Pardon the words that I'm using, but uh, let's see what Dr. Mazzani has to say about how to follow up with residency interview. So for the first question, what should be the goal of our post-interview? The goal during the interview and post-interview is to make sure that you get ranked. And of course, we're talking about residency match and you know, getting an interview is, is a, you know, it's a momentous occasion. Performing really well is really important, obviously, as we all know, but there is a whole different world that happens in parallel to the interview season, which is programs considering who they're going to leave on the rank order list. And, and this rank order list is a long list and, you know, program may have 15 slots and their rank order list could be 300 interviewees long. They could rank every single person that they interview. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily help if you're in the bottom of the rank order list for the program. So you need to be way up on top. So got to figure out a way to get up on top, you know, so that's the goal post interview. So uh, that being said, what would be some of the ways to stay memorable for these residency programs? Like how do you not just become one of the numbers in their another pile in their interview? Yeah, yeah. sure. And, and I, I remember when we were interviewing, uh, you know, after a while, people just started to kind of jumble together, right? And uh, we used to forget what everybody looked like and not all the interviews were were memorable. Some were for the wrong reasons, one, some were for the right reasons. But the idea is to make sure that very strategically you figure out how to communicate with programs post-interview. So one of the most important thing to do is to ask the program and program coordinator is probably the best person to do it is, you know, what is your post-interview protocol? communication wise and they'll tell you and most of them are okay with you contacting the people that you interviewed at and those that are not okay uh they will also let you know and if they're not okay then you certainly don't want to uh, challenge that uh, but if they are okay then you want to figure out a reason why you want to follow up and and what's the reason for this follow-up it's really important to not sound desperate uh don't try to oversell yourself uh, nobody wants a desperate resident nobody wants a desperate anything and so um, in these post interviews, there has to be a really good reason why you're following up with them and what's the, what's the purpose. Thank you. Cards are great. Thank you. Emails are great. Uh, not sure if phone calls are really good, but, but again, the idea is just want to make sure that you're remembered for the positive reasons. So if you weren't able to ask them what the protocol is, how would you initiate uh, reaching out to them? Like just email? I would pick up the phone and call the coordinator. Usually if you interview there, the coordinator is receptive to you and she or he will answer your questions and you just follow up and say, you know, thank you so much for the opportunity to interview there. What is the post interview protocol? Can I contact the interviewers and thank them? Uh, I want to send a thank you card. I want to send a thank you email. Uh, how do I go about doing that? Can I do that? And then with the holidays coming up, uh, would you recommend contacting them before during or after, does it even matter? It does. You want to thank them within 24 hours of your interview and then follow up should be for uh, meaningful reasons. For example, let's say that during the interview, you want to very strategically kind of leave the interview in a way where you're kind of leaving the door open to follow up with the, with the interviewer. For example, let's say that they're talking about a clinical experience of yours and you have an upcoming internal medicine experience that's uh, coming up in let's say december and you talk about it and you say this is scheduled i'm supposed to be doing a postgraduate sub internship and you know I'm, would you would you like me to share you know if i do secure a letter of recommendation would you like me to have it forwarded to you and most likely the interviewer is going to say yes and 
And that's your ticket into contacting that interviewer in the future. But then you would have to make sure that you jot it down correctly, that uh, and you put it in your calendar that, well, hopefully, number one, you do get a letter of recommendation. And then number two, you follow up with what you uh, what you discussed and what you promised. So you said reasons to contact program directors. Thank you. Following up on a clinical block, reading mm -hmm. the holidays. Do you have other creative ways to um, contact them? I think one of the best and the most effective ways of remaining relevant to programs is during the interview season, pretty close to the rank order list submission time, which is like, say, January, is for you to do a rotation with them during that time. And so if you're right there with the people that interviewed you and you see them every single day, it's very, very difficult for them to forget that you interviewed there and, and they're going to constantly think about you. And, and uh, hopefully you're going to be remembered as somebody to be placed on top of their rank order list if you're performing really well. So to me, I found that to be one of the biggest hidden gems in uh, being able to remain relevant and, and for programs to truly rethink the rank order list based on who's rotating with them at that time when right before the rank order list is submitted. It makes a huge difference. What about uh, sending a letter of intent? Uh, what would be the content for that? And what is your advice on that? Uh, so I don't believe that there is such a thing as a letter of intent for residency programs because your intent was your ERAS application submission. When you apply to them, you showed your intent to, to want to end up at that program and you're asking them for an interview. So following up with programs afterwards, let's say if you didn't get an interview, which was the topic of our last week's podcast and on our last week's webinar where you follow up with programs that you apply to and try to garner additional interviews you know a letter of intent we said that it is just a basic follow-up with programs and so when you interview you don't want to send that letter of intent afterwards because you're way past that right they've shown an interest in you you've shown an interest in them you've interviewed there now it's about making sure that you remain on top of the rank order list and so don't send a letter of intent uh, after you've had an interview thank you dr mazani for your advice and this concludes this future doc podcast episode and if you're listening to this podcast be sure to watch the video form on youtube at youtube.com forward slash ac medical org and you know everyone who's, who's listening over here i think it's really important that you don't drop your guard at this most critical juncture right after you've had an interview and and try to stay relevant to be placed on programs right corner list and place place high and so don't be uh, afraid of asking for advice and, and ac medical we're, we're always here and we love to communicate with you so you can go to acmedical.org try us for free try hyphen us hyphen for hyphen free and you can uh, get a free access pass to uh, one of our office hours and you can come and ask your question and you know, I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Uh, just get advice, get proper advice and mentorship. And so you don't lose this once in a lifetime opportunity. And if uh, you have any other questions, you want to just go to and email us, please email us at podcast at uh, acmedical.org or visit our website at acmedical.org. And uh, so thank you. As always, thank you for your time, Dr. Mazzani, and for your, our future docs. We will catch you next week. And thank you, Dr. Rosas, for co-hosting with me here today. Have a good day. <laughs>